Hey guys, John coming to you from Evolve Custom Rod Shops, showing you part two of my carbon fiber grip build. What I'm doing here is I'm putting a coat of epoxy on. I just pulled off the zip ties. I want to make sure everything's got a nice even coat on it. Make sure the low spots have epoxy where the zip ties were. And just give everything a more even coat. When I'm putting out large amounts of epoxy on like this over larger areas, I always like to have it on wrap as opposed to dry. That way I can move it a little bit faster. I feel it gives a more even coat. Of course, you want to use your heat here to get any air bubbles out and try and smooth out the epoxy. Now I'm flipping it back to my dry. Okay, we're all dried up. Now we're going to cut it. I'm just using my coping saw again with, you know, just a normal blade, essentially. Most of these blades will cut metal. I'm separating the grip. Of course, you want to clean up a little. And now we're going to get into the part where I'm going to be sanding everything down. The sanding's really important. I can't stress this enough. To have some kind of vacuum cleaner or ventilation. You do not want to be sucking in these carbon fiber bits. Now you can sand right into this carbon fiber. Um, you can almost sand it away to nothing and it will still look good. Um, it doesn't go the same with fiberglass. We have discussed this in the last video. It's really actually pretty amazing how far you can sand down the carbon fiber and you just wet it and it looks beautiful again but this way you can get a smooth finish now what I'm doing here is not so much about the finish it's just making sure that HCC carbon fiber real seat slides on and again I want a pretty snug fit because the inside of the HCC real C is not really linear. It's got some pockets in it. So I want it fairly snug because I'm going to have glue in those pockets. When I glue it up, you'll see that. So just sanding it, sanding it, sanding it smooth. And again, once once you've sanded this smooth, there's no point in polishing it because it's going to be glued up under the real seat. There we go. At this point, because I got the vacuum out and I got the sandpaper out, I'm going to also be sanding the rest of the grip. This will get any high spots or low spots where the epoxy is. Help, help for a smoother finish. Pretty happy with that fit there. Now there's a little bit of a gap between the grip and the real seat. And I'm not so worried about that. Basically, we'll fill that in with epoxy. Very easy to do. So I'm using a Scotch-Brite pad here just to smooth it out. Just to get any loose epoxy that might still be on there off. Now I'm going to sand the rest of the grips. Again, I'm starting with 150, just getting everything sanded down, get a nice smooth finish. Don't forget to get the edges and the ends. And don't forget, you can 
sand into the carbon fiber a little. Just be careful. Make sure you have a vacuum or ventilation handy because you do not want to be breathing that stuff in. Same thing here. I'm just putting a little quick polish on it. So get any loose bits of epoxy off. Clean anything up. Actually, it makes a semi-matte finish. <laughs> Okay, so I've actually added a couple coats of epoxy on here and just double checking the fit, make sure nothing swelled up and we're looking good. Now what we need to do is we need to get the butt section to fit the rod blank. This will make sense shortly get out the custom-made reamers if you want to know how to make those there'll be a link right here so as you can see I'm constantly test fitting Just take your time. This stuff reams pretty easily. Granted, this video sped up, but... If you notice there, I was trying to fit it onto the back. <clears throat> You'll see why. So hopefully right there, I'm perfect. <clears throat> it's basically the blank diameter at the very back. There might be a very tiny gap, but that'll be filled in once all finished. This here is a coin you can buy at Michael's. It's basically used for um, jewelry making, and I'll leave a link in the description. Then I take a piece of my uh, decal, which is the Maryland flag. I had that printed up for me. I paste it right on the middle of that coin. And then I take some scissors, cut off the edges. And then I roll around it with a razor blade. It's surprising how easy this is. And you'll get a nice finish. It doesn't have to be super perfect because we're going to inset this as our butt cap. So in order to get this into the end of our grip, we need to pull out the Dremel. I have it with a sanding drum on it, a little small sanding drum. What this is going to do is we're going to basically make the very back end of the, the end of the rod. We're going to open it up to accept this coin. This coin's about the size of a quarter, but it's just a piece of aluminum, like a stamped out. And it's, again, made for jewelry making, but we're going to use it for a different purpose here. Just take your time with this. You'll feel like you can screw it up, but just take your time. Also, if you have a multi-speed Dremel, higher speeds work a little bit easier. Just make sure you got a good handle on it because, you know, it can grip the, uh, grip the carbon fiber and take off on you. So just take your time and just work it. I'm constantly test fitting it to see where I need to be. This is almost like inletting your grips.
or a fly reel seat. It's just the same premise. I'm just not going as deep. Perfect. So now we got it all set up. We are happy, good to go. We're going to grab our paste epoxy and we're going to do two things here. We're going to take that coin we put the sticker on. We're going to epoxy it into the end of the butt section. And then we're going to epoxy on the reel seat to the foregrip or to the, uh, you know, the handle with the arbor on it. So I'm using Pro Paste, Paste Epoxy. It's two part epoxy. This stuff is wonderful. I started using this stuff probably four years ago and just it's super easy to work with. Get it all mixed up. First thing I'm going to do is put a little bit right inside where the coin's going to go, then on the back side of the coin. This isn't super important that this, you know, be, be stuck in there perfect because we're going to cover it in epoxy anyway. And then when we put it on the rod, we're going to be using more epoxy. So with the real seat, I'm doing this backwards because there are a lot of pockets in this HCC reel seat. I'm actually putting epoxy inside the reel seat as well as on the actual arbor itself. And this is to make sure all the voids get filled. And I'll slide it on. Looking good. You see a little bit came out the front. That's perfect. And we'll let that set up. Okay, putting the grip on here, I'll show you why in a minute. And what I'm doing here is building up an arbor for my, uh, building up an arbor for the rear grip. And what this is going to do is, or the butt section, um, this is going to allow me to put epoxy on top of that coin to seal it in. See, I made it a little big. You just back it off until you got it perfect. There you go. Now, now we can put epoxy on the end of it. I'm going to actually add some tape just because I don't want this thing moving at all. So I got my epoxy mixed up. Just using the standard Pro Coat medium. And I'm just working the epoxy around there. Now I'm also, now I'm starting to fill in the gap between the real seat and the grip. And what I'm doing, the way I'm doing this is I'm actually pushing the epoxy towards the towards the reel seat. What this is going to do is it's going to keep the epoxy off the reel seat, but it'll build it up and it'll kind of fall into the gap. You just have to be careful here not to use too much of epoxy because too much epoxy can actually cause air bubbles, regardless if you use your heat. You know, if you have time to check on your epoxy after about an hour, you'll see if any air bubbles develop if you think you used a lot of epoxy. And at that point, you can actually hit them with heat. They'll pop and, you know, you should be good to go. If you wait three to four hours, you won't be as good. Of course, I'm using the heat to smooth everything out again. I got my blank marked up, got my end section done, everything's glued into place, got my gaps filled, and I'm actually, once I put the thread on the base of these, I'm going to add epoxy again to the grips, and that's just the final coat, that way everything's homogenous into the blank. So now I'm reaming out the arbor and the grip, you can see this is super easy. 
Just take your time. Make sure you're spinning it as you're reaming it. That way it stays centered. I test fit quite often. I'm always test fitting. Because I don't want to ream it too much. I want it a little bit loose. When I say a little bit loose, I just want it to slide past maybe half an inch past my mark. That way I know I can get a nice coat of epoxy on there. So, we're all good. And because I have that cap on the end of the rod, it's all it's all taken care of. Guys, there might be a part three to this video. It just depends on, as you can see, that pile of rods there. I got some work to do. Just cleaning up the ends after reaming it. Sometimes it can be a little uneven, so I'm just evening it out. Make it look perfect. Guys, hope you like this video. Um, it, there may be a par three. There may not. I, I got a lot of work ahead of me to do in the shop. So please like and subscribe.